What's up guys? In this video we're going to be updating Black Arch. Pretty much the same as regular Arch Linux with a few extra packages installed. And it might sound like it's fairly straightforward. Perhaps it is, but it's very likely we're going to run into some issues as we do this. So let's see if we can deal with the issues as they crop up. So we're going to log in as our user account. First thing we'll do is fire up a terminal. And we're going to start by running the basic command for updating any Arch installation, which is going to be sudo pacman hyphen capital S Y U. It's going to prompt us for the password since we're not logged in as root. And as you can see, we've hit our first roadblock. We haven't even begun the update process. And we've got this message, Zen shell, that's the username, is not in the sudo as file. The sudo as file contains a configuration for which users are allowed to use the sudo command. The sudo command temporarily allows us to have admin user rights. Now we could get past this roadblock simply by running the update command again as the root user. That's completely fine if you want to do this. In fact, Black Arch doesn't ship with user accounts. You have to add your own user account. So there's a chance you only have the root account at this moment, in which case you can skip to running the pacman update command, and you can actually use it without sudo if you're already logged in as admin. We're not going to do that. We want to use the sudo command, so we're going to have to find a way of adding our user to the sudo as file. To help us do that, we are going to temporarily log in as root. So we're going to use the command su root, switch user to root, and we're going to type in the root password, which is fairly straightforward if you're using the default credentials for Black Arch because the password is going to be Black Arch. Now we're logged in as root, and we can use the command vi sudo to check out the sudo as file. We're basically open inside the vim text editor, so we can use the arrow keys to go down, but we can also just use the j key, which is what the creators of vim intended. Now we can see that the root user has access and we could just add Zenshell to the list of users that can use the sudo command. However, the most common way of doing this in Linux is to have a user group named wheel. And if users are added to that group, they're allowed to use the sudo command. So notice here where it says uncomment to allow members of group wheel to execute any command. So in Vim, we could just hit the X key to get rid of any characters we don't want. Now that's uncommented. And we have the will group has all access to the sudo command right now. So in Vim, we're going to hit the escape key, colon, WQ for write and quit. And now our sudo as file is updated. Now it's not going to work just yet because the next step is to add our Zenshell user to the will user group to allow it to be able to use the sudo command. To do this, we're going to make use of the user mod command, dash A for append, G for groups. I'm gonna type in the name of the group, which is wheel. Then we're going to type the name of the user you want to add to that group, which is Zenshell in this case. So let's run that. Now we can switch back to Zenshell. So we're gonna use SU for switch user, Zenshell, and here we go back in our Zenshell account. Now we should be able to use the sudo command. So let's test it out. We're going to run sudo pacman hyphen syu. It's asking us for our password, which is a good sign. And it's now attempting the update. Now it's going to prompt us to replace a bunch of stuff, which we're just going to choose yes to. Just a tip here, notice where it says YN and the Y is capital and the N is lowercase. It basically means the default option is yes. So rather than typing a capital Y every time, you can just press enter for these because so long as we want yes, which is the default option, enter is going to perform that option. So we'll keep choosing yes for this. Whoa. So it wants to download and install this package Tesseract. It appears to be an optical character recognition package. In terms of which we want, we just have to choose one of the options. It's got default equals one. That's fine if you just want to ignore this. We're probably not going to use this package anyway. I'm guessing we might want 28, which is Tesseract Data ENG. These appear to be language packs, but 
we can deal with this kind of thing when we're actually using the Tesseract package. Right now, we just want to complete the installation process. So let's choose 28. Let's keep on moving. The following package cannot be upgraded due to unresolvable dependencies. GVMD, do you want to skip the above package for this upgrade? That's fine, we can skip that for now. It's telling us that we have some conflicting packages, Python Mistune and Python Mistune 1. Do we want to remove Python Mistune? We're okay with that. Now it's giving us the details of the installation. So it's telling us we're going to be downloading about eight and a half gig and install that's going to take up about 28 gig, but the net upgrade size is only 26.25 MB. So you can see there's a lot of stuff that's being replaced here in this case. Proceed with installation, yes. This is the part that's going to take a while. It's just going to pull in all of the files for the updates to the various packages. All right, so that was fairly insane. We're just over an hour in. We have the 3003 package updates downloaded. So now it's asking us about keys in our keyring, and it's saying we need to import these PGP keys. The way that these packages work is that they are signed by a trusted source using a private key. And what we're downloading here is the corresponding public keys that allow us to make sure these packages are legitimate, they're from who they say they are, and that they haven't been tampered with in any way. So we're going to choose yes for these. Here we go, we can see it's checking the package integrity. So we're getting a message here that one of our packages is corrupted. Now it doesn't necessarily mean the package is corrupted. It could be that we don't have the appropriate public key. Arch is simply not going to work with this file at this stage with its current configuration. And you can see just before you get this message, we have this error, Linux API headers, signature from is unknown. So it seems most likely that we simply don't have the corresponding public key of the private key that was used to sign this package. Now, of course, it could be that something is not right with the package. We have no way of knowing that this particular signature should be trusted. We're just going to play it on the safe side for now and delete these packages. It's going to be fairly trivial to reinstall them once we have the appropriate public key on our keyring. And notice we're getting similar problems for some of the other packages as well. So we're just going to keep on deleting these for now. Okay, so the process completes and we run into our next error message. Errors occurred, no packages were upgraded, failed to commit transaction invalid or corrupted package. Now we have a fairly reasonable idea about what's occurring at the moment. It's simply that we don't have the right public keys on our keyring we're unable to verify that these packages are okay for installation. And the most likely reason is we simply don't have all of the up-to-date public keys that we need in order to complete this update process. So the question is, how can we update our public key collection? And to do that, we're going to use the command sudo hackman-key-refresh-keys. Type in our password because we are not root at this stage. Okay, so now we've refreshed our list of public keys. Hopefully we're not going to get the error message now for corrupted or invalid packages because we have the corresponding public keys to confirm that the packages have been signed by a trusted source. So with that in mind, we're just going to run sudo pacman syu again and we're going to hope this time that the install process doesn't error out. Thankfully, we won't need to download all of the packages again, hopefully, since it did take well over an hour. So we're back at the beginning of the process again. And if there's any lesson from this, it's that you should probably run the refresh keys command before attempting to install. So we have some of the same questions that we had. And I already knew that this might happen. The objective here was to actually reproduce what a typical install flow process might look like where you didn't realize you had to refresh the keys. You end up doing some of the install process again, it can be quite frustrating. Previously, we selected 28 here.
So we can see originally the total download size was about eight and a half gig. There are some packages we need to download this time around, but you can see total download size is 572 meg. So we don't need to worry about it taking as long this time. So our packages have successfully passed the validation, but unfortunately our update process has failed again. Failed to commit transaction. This time we have conflicting files. And it's referencing this Python ANT1R4. It says USR bin pygrun exists in file system. And it's owned by Python ANTR14, Python 3 runtime. Errors occurred, no packages were upgraded. So because of an error from this one package, the entire update process has now failed. So what's happened here? Well, essentially the installer has tried to place a file in USR bin pygrun, but the problem is it already exists. So we're simply going to run a sudo rm and we're going to remove the file from that location. So it's forward slash USR forward slash bin forward slash pygrun. Enter our password because we're not root. And the file is now gone from that location. So we can once again run sudo pacman syu. There shouldn't really be any reason why the update process fails this time. All right, there we go guys. Two hours, 25 minutes later, we have completed the black arch upgrade. Key takeaways, refresh your keys beforehand. It's going to save you a bit of time. Keep in mind that this is a fairly extreme example. This black arch install has never been updated. So that's why it's taken so long. If you keep your install regularly updated, this is hopefully going to take a few minutes each time.